Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, I am Professor Avinash Dadich and uh, I am the Dean Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture especially on labor laws. When I say labor laws, it is very much connected with everyone. Sometimes you think that when we are talking about labor laws, it is only blue collar job. But now this uh, difference between blue collar and white collar job is diminishing. Okay. So, in India right now we have more than 40 laws dealing with labor laws. But now we are bringing labor codes, okay, the new labor codes. And in this lecture, mainly we will talk about new labor codes, you know, instead of the existing law, which is going to be replaced very soon, maybe next few months, you will see that the entire labor law is going to change. Okay? So, instead of the existing one, I am focusing on the reform, the new law, which is going to implement in India. Just like GST, in tax law we introduce the GST and we replace so many things. Same thing government of India is trying to do in the labor codes. So, all labor codes basically it talks about wages, industrial relations, social security, conditions and occupational safety, health and working conditions have been passed by parliament and received the assent of the president. So, at any time it can be notified by the government of India. Still not yet notified into effect, it was expected to take effect on April uh, 1, 2021, replace all 40 uh, existing laws, but government deferred labor courts implementation. So, what we believe that in maybe coming time, why government is trying to introduce these labor codes? The objective is very simple. Is objective is to simplify and modernize labor law in India with an emphasis, emphasis on ease of doing business. Students, I believe you know about there is a ease of doing business report issued by the World Bank every year. And in that report, the World Bank gives ranking to all countries in terms of doing business, you know, ease of doing business, like whether that country is good for doing business or not. Because if a country is not good for doing business, then why foreign direct investment, why foreign companies will come and do business. Okay? So, the government of India is trying its best to create an environment where the foreign companies as well as the Indian companies can do their business with ease, with relaxation. Okay? And labor issues, labor laws uh, used to be considered as the one of the most challenging aspect for the government of India, okay? because lab, Indian labor laws were enacted during the British period. Okay? And after the British period, when we adopted socialist approach, okay? it was like too much pro-labor and anti-business. I am not saying that we need, we do not need to protect labors, yes we do and we need to protect their life, their safety, their growth, wages, everything. But at the same time, we need to create a balance where a business can also flourish. Because if business does not flourish, then ultimately the company will shut down, the factory will close down and then all labors will lose their job. It has happened in many states. So, like for example, West Bengal used to be one of the most dynamic state in production, in factories, in business. But if you see the situation, then in last 30, 40 years, most of the business houses, they have moved outside of West Bengal. 
it's i'm not talking about the po political scene i'm just talking about the over emphasis on the labor laws and the over protection of the labor situation and disturbing the peaceful coexistence of laborers and employer okay so th these new labor codes they are trying to create that coexistence in a very peaceful and efficient manner so the first code the code of wages 2020 this code will replace four legislature including the payment of wages act payment of bonus act equal remuneration act and minimum wages act so you see within one law they will integrate all these four laws so sometimes it's very difficult for companies especially the small companies mid sized companies to compliance with all labor laws if i say 40 labor laws for a company it's almost impossible to comply with all labor laws so we want to simplify it you know we want to put we want to integrate labor laws in one law the draft central rule replace eight different rules presently framed under the existing laws. So it's like that. These act four acts, and then eight different rules issued by the government. So eight rules, only one rule will be there. Four laws, only one law will be there. Court seeks to bring uh, uniformity across all the previous laws. Example, uniform definition of wages, employees defined, which includes even managerial and supervisory employees. So, you will find that the definition of the particular terms like the wages, employees, managers, they are very much different in different laws. Like for example, Payment of Wages Act or Payment Minimum Wages Act, you may find different definitions. So, this creates confusion in the mind of an employer as well as the enforcement agency. All obligations of employer towards timely payment of wages to now apply to all employees. Okay? So, it is not only that uh, the blue collar guys, they will be benefited from this law, even the white collar people, they are also protected under the code of wages. Like the, when I say timely payment that the payment should be on time earlier this provision is only protecting the blue collar employees white collar employees the manager supervisor the senior people they are not protected but now they will also be protected the code does achieve simplification and consolidation 60 old section in the code and 50 old rules in the central rule two registers to be maintained down from 10 registers and one return to be filed down from four under the previous law. So, to comply with these provisions like the wages uh, uh, compliance relating to wages, right now the companies have to maintain 10 different registers. And now, once this code of wages will be enacted, only two registers need to be there. Same thing, right now the companies uh, need to file four different returns, now only one return will be sufficient. State can however frame separate rules, should not defeat the purpose of the new enactment. Students, why this is important? Because when we have so many rules, regulations, laws, then we automatically invite corruption because then the labor inspector, labor officers, they always exploit the situation because for a company it is almost impossible like you see only for wages they have to maintain 10 registers. So, just think about other laws also there are still 36 laws maybe they need to maintain 30, 40 registers and they are all contradicting with each other. So, sometimes it is difficult for the small companies and that is why they have to pay bribes. So, if we can simplify the labor law, okay, then maybe companies can do better compliance and there will be no need of paying any bribe. That is very interesting development is inspector come facilitator. Moving from inspector Raj to facilitator task with advising employers and workers on compliance. Currently, the job of a labor inspector is just to go and identify the problems, issues, shortcomings and then ask for the money legally, illegally, formally, informally. 
that guy is not helping the employer that guy is not hem uh, helping the employees he is working as an inspector that's an inspector raj he is not contributing in any compliance mechanism so now th this inspector will turn into a facilitator and his job will be advising employer and employees that what to do what not to do because when i say that if someone is non complying with the labor code or labor laws intentionally or unintentionally knowingly or unknowingly suppose if someone is doing unintentionally unknowingly and then if you impose penalty on them that's not very fair for the business so the new law will tell this inspector that you have to go and tell the people that what they are supposed to do how they are supposed to do help them not only just go and say okay give me money i will impose penalty on you you please help them and then it will be completely faceless interaction just like the income tax it may reduce corruption code introduce web based inspection and calling of information so now this inspector will not go directly you know he has to go through some technology and whenever there is a dispute between an employer and labor authority it will be a faceless interaction so not necessary that you will be talking to the same labor inspector maybe you you are talking to some other uh, labor inspector so then the corruption will reduce okay code recognize code recognized it that labor law violates are technical offense rather than criminal offense decriminalization of offense that's very important suppose you are running a small company you are running a small factory you know maybe 30 40 50 people are working in your company you don't have much resources you can't hire a compliance officer uh, suppose like you know you are working in a company only 50 people and you are one of their sales manager okay or maybe you are the hr manager so you don't have a, like a big team of lawyers compliance officer you do your best you know from your side to comply with all labor rules and regulations but even with your best efforts you miss something okay so right now the existing law says that you have done a criminal activity it's not a criminal activity it's just like i miss something knowingly or unknowingly that's a separate thing but even knowingly if i miss something it's a civil offense so this laws uh, the new code will say that it will not be a criminal offense but a civil offense right now the penalty is a uh, maximum of 3 months and if the violation is repeated up to 5 years so currently the labor inspector can come and file fir against you but not after this law once it's enacted it will not be possible but they have increased penalties uh, from 10000 to 50000 okay so this the penalty will be high and company law type compounding of offense introduced pay fine and be excused compounding fee 50% of fine prescribed not available for two and similar violation in the next 5 years if you have done something wrong just go and say oh yes i have done some mistake this is the penalty please take 50% penalty settle it i will not do it again as simple as that instead of a civil and criminal litigation against the company the promoters the founders employees you create lot of nuisance in the company they are investing lot of money to do business and suddenly this type of small pt labor issues are uh, disturb their business so this new law will say okay you just go and 50% of your penalty and go home and please ensure that you don't repeat the same offense or same uh, wrong doing in next 5 years that's fine allowances in excess of 50% of wages to be considered as wages for example if allowances constitute 55% of ctc excess 5% deemed to be the part of wages payment of payment for overtime introduced by central law cannot be less than twice the normal wages this is very important because here they are asking very simple very clearly that if someone is doing overtime then that overtime payment can cannot be less than double okay so like for example uh, the normal price for 1 hour is 500 rupees and if someone is doing overtime so then it cannot like overtime for 2 hours 
so then that over time cannot be less than 1000 rupees per hour okay so it ensures fairness for the employees too you know because as i said this law is trying to create a balance between the employer and employees Wage period flexibility may be beneficial to MNCs who prefer to align salary payment fortnightly in line with group practices. So right now the salary has to be monthly, but if you see the US model, salary can be weekly, fortnightly or monthly. So if they want, they can create that flexibility. So that is very good for MNCs because they can align their payment facilities with their mother company. Salary, comp uh, salary payment. Certain notified section can only make electronic payments. So for the uh, blue collar employees, the employees who are working at the very low level, their payment has to be electronic only. It will ensure two things, corruption, that there will be no middleman who is taking money, uh, you know, of this money from these guys. Second, it will bring transparency whether they are paying that money or not. Okay whether they are paying the right amount or not because sometimes it happens when it is not electronic they say okay I gave 10,000 rupees cash and then eventually they get the signature but in reality the amount given is only 8,000 rupees okay. So for a small uh, labor it is difficult to raise his voice and difficult to go for legal action but in this sense when they go for the electronic then there will be no confusion and full and final settlement to be made within two days of termination or resignation they can't they can't linger on the resignation and termination payment okay once resignation is given the time period like the notice period is over you have to do full and final settlement right now we're taking almost like 45 days okay so for some employees it's very difficult to wait for 45 days because normally in most of the companies they do not give the last month salary. So eventually it means they have to wait for two and a half months when they join a new company the salary will come after one month. So effectively it is like a three and a half months without any money ok. So now it is it within the two days they have to set they have to clear. Claims by employees limitation period extended to three years if any right now it is a one year so if claims by the employees if employees are making any claims so the limitation period limitation period means that after three years they cannot go to the court there, there is a limitation period for all civil issues so in this case uh, within the three years they can go to the court burden on employer to prove that they have made timely and accurate payments records to be preserved for at least three years now it is a burden on the employer in future if there are any conflict or any issue any dispute whether a appropriate right amount was given to the employee or the not now it is not the employee who has to prove that whether I have received right amount it is the burden on employer to prove that he has given right amount appropriate amount to the employee and this record they must keep it for three years okay so this is the first law and the second one is industrial relation code 2020 the ir code will consolidate and amend the following laws relating to trade unions conditions of employment in industrial establishment undertaking and matters relating to industrial dispute so mainly these three laws industrial dispute act trade union act and industrial employment standing orders act 1946 so these three important laws will be consolidated through industrial relations code 2020 so what major changes this law will bring the term employer replaced the term workman under the id act definition broadly similar to that of a workman under the it act id act industrial dispute act workman includes an employee inter alia engaged to do any manual unskilled skill technical operational clerical or supervisory work for hire or reward so now they are talking about a larger population it's not only the blue collar but even the white collar the supervisory job is also included but it will not include 
an employee engaged mainly in managerial or administrative capacity. A supervisory capacity drawing wages more than 10,000 rupees per month. The code increases the supervisory role monthly wages cap to 18,000 per month and increase up from the previous monthly wages of a 10,000. So, now up to 18,000 uh, per month the person can be considered as a supervisor. So, then he will be also included in this. Fixed term employment and fixed term employee. Fixed term employee means the engagement of a worker on the basis of a written contract of the employment for a fixed period. Fixed term employment will be allowed across all sectors. Fixed term employment will have parity in terms of employment working conditions, pay and social security benefits as applicable to a payment employee engaged in the same regardless of working for the qualified period. Gratuity will be paid to FTE who works for more than one work, one year. So, even those guys who are working on contract basis, they will also get the uh, gratuity. Main exception is that the retracement obligations would not arise when a worker's contract is not renewed on expiry of the fixed term. So, this retracement obligations will not apply. Grievance redressal mechanism. Section 9C of ID Act required industrial establishment employing 20 or more workmen to constitute a grievance redressal committee. The Industrial Dispute Act also permitted establishment to have their own grievance redressal committee mechanism. The IR code now requires the grievance redressal committee as per the specific format under the code. Government approval for closures, layoff and retracement. This is very important especially for the industrial dispute. Under the ID Act, a factory, mine or plantation with 100 or more workmen requires prior permission of the concerned government to close down an undertaking or to lay off or retrace workmen. This is the existing law. This ID code has increased this threshold for requirement of prior government approval to 300 and more workers. Why this is so? Because if such suppose like in a small factory having maybe 100 people, 120, 130, it's very difficult for them to go to the government, convince them that okay, we cannot run our operations anymore and we want to shut it down. So now the new IR code will apply only when a company is having more than 300 workers. All other requirements in relation to the layoff, closure or retracement remain unchanged under the IR code for such entities. No change for ITs, IT sectors in relation of closure, retracement or layoff. So, still same rule will apply on IT companies. Standing orders for establishment with 300 plus workers. Industrial establishment with 300 plus workers or more are now required to prepare standing orders on the matters listed in schedule 1 to the IR code like classification of workers, manner of informing workers about work hours, holidays, pay days, wages rates termination of employment, grievance redressal mechanism. This is an increase from the previous threshold of 100 workers under the IESO Act. Okay, so, again if you are having less than 300, maybe you do not need to keep all this information. This rule will apply only to those people who are having more than 300 workers. Threshold of applicability under the IESO Act varied from state to state based on local amendments. State, certain states <coughs> had provided exemption from the applicability of IESO Act to specific sectors such as exemptions grant, granted in Karnataka for IT uh, sector uh, subject to establishment fulfilling specific employment conditions. There is no clarity at this stage on state exemption to this requirement. So, you will find that different states have adopted different rules and that will happen <coughs> For the in future also, because labor law is very much connected to the local requirements. So, the state governments can change, they can amend the local laws. 
Standing order under the IR code will need clarification by the labor authorities. Strikes and lockout, this is very important. The IR code imposes a blanket prohibition on strikes and lockout, lockouts in all industrial establishment without notice and is not limited to public uti utility services. So, without notice, they now they cannot go for strikes and lockouts. <coughs> the provision in relation to the notice requirement remain the same. And this is still they need to give notice. The ID Act applied only to public utility services where there was a prohibition on a strike and lockouts without notice. A unit could not go on strike in breach of contract without giving notice 60 days before the strike or within 14 days of giving such a notice. Okay? So, similar notice requirements were provide, provided during the conciliation proceeding or industrial tribunal proceeding. Provisions are provided in relation to the public utility service employer or attempting a lockout of the workmen. Trade unions, that is very important. Negotiating union. If there is more than one registered trade union of workers functioning in an establishment, the trade union having more than 51 percent of workers as members would be recognized as a trade union negotiating union. Okay? In case no trade union is eligible as a sole negotiating union, a negotiating council will be formed consisting of representative of unions that have at least 20 percent of the workers as members. So, how to identify that which trade union uh, is the negotiating power? Okay, so, the law is very clear 51 percent and more. If this is not the situation, then there will be council and people from different trade unions will be elected in that council. This restricts the negotiating capacity of workers as previously allowed under the TU Act. Okay. Electronic filing, the trade IR code provides that procedures and filing can be made electronically. The old act did not have specific provisions for electronic filing. Dispute resolution streamline. <coughs> The dispute resolution mechanism had been streamlined. Certain courts like Board of Conciliation, Board of Inquiry and Labor Courts have been abolished. Section 43 and 44 of IR code now provide only for conciliation officers, industrial tribunals and national industrial tribunals. Increase in penalty. Penalties have been substantially increased under the IR code. Those are, for example, the penalty for contravention of the section 70 conditions uh, relating to the retracement of workers under the IR code is now up to 2 lakhs, wherein the previous law it's, it was only 100 rupees. As I said ki these laws were made during the British period, so still they are following same penalties. Compounding of penalty is now possible for the first time offence subject to conditions. Okay? So, the, you can also make compromises, you can pay 50 percent and uh, make an undertaking that you will not repeat this thing in future. Exemption possible for applicability, the appropriate government is empowered to exempt any company or any industrial establishment or class of companies from the IR code in public interest. Now, we will talk about the code of social security 2020. The SS code will consolidate and amend the following relate laws relating to social security and the SS code will replace 9 central laws. So, you can see very clearly that one law will integrate, consolidate so many different laws. So, it will give more clarity, more systematic approach to employer, employees as well as the enforcement agencies. So, these 9 laws will be replaced like the Employees Compensation Act 1923, Unorganized Workers Social Security Act 2008, the Payment of Gratuity Act 1972, the Employees State Insurance Act 1948, the Sign Workers Welfare Fund 80, 1981, the Employers Provident Fund and Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1952 the Employment Exchange Compulsory Notification of Vacancies Act 1959, 
the maternity benefit act 1961 and the building and other construction workers such act 1996 so these nine laws will be replaced by the new social security code 2020 rationalization and new definitions the SS code rationalizes and introduces new definitions like these includes contract laborers, contractors, confinement, dependent, employee, expanded to include workers through contractors, okay. employers, employment, injury, exempted uh, employee, factory, family, fixed term employment. Okay. And that, that's very interesting. Interstate migrant workers expanded to include self-employed workers from another state, self-employed workers. So even the self-employed workers will also be included in it. Social security organizations like EPF board, ESIC, National Se Social Security Board for Unorganized Workers, State Unorganized Workers Social Security Board, State Building and other constructions workers welfare board and any other board by the government of india and unorganized sectors unorganized workers and finally wages aligned with the code of wages so these things will be properly rationalized and defined under the ss code pf fund provisions that's very interesting the pf act applied to establishment employees uh, employing 20 or more employees this remains unchanged under the SS code. However, contributors under the PF Act are at 12 percent. Under the SS code, contributions are at 10 percent. So, they have reduced from 12 to 10. Central government may by notification increase contribution rate from 10 to 12. Under the PF Act, appeal could be made by any person agreed by a notification or order issued by the central government or any authority. Under the SS code, ambit of appeal process has been reduced and any person agreed by any order passed by any authority in regard to determination and assessment of dues and levy of damages may prefer an appeal to the tribunal and other main aspects relating will be same. Employees state insurance provisions, the ESI Act provisions inter alia applied to establishment employing 10 or more employees. This remains unchanged. Under the SS code, also it also applies to establishment which carry on hazardous or life threatening work notified by central government. Under the ESI Act, contributions paid by the employer to the fund shall be 3.25 percentage. Contribution rate under the SS rule is 3.25 for employer and 0.75 for the employee okay so i'm just talking about the existing rule as well as the changes changes <clears throat> gratuity provisions the gratuity act provisions apply to establishment employing 10 or more employees this remains unchanged okay the gratuity eligibility stands for most employees at 5 years, but this is reduced in certain cases such as 3 years for working journalists. The gratuity cap is 20 lakhs under the gratuity act. This will not be specified by the central government under this SS code, so there will be no cap. Main matters such as mode of computation of the gratuity, possible withholding of gratuity remains unchanged. Maternity benefit provisions. The Maternity and Benefits Act provisions apply to establishment employing 10 or more employees. This remains unchanged under the SS code. The MB Act provides for payment of a medical bonus of Rs 3500 by the employer in case no paid prenatal confinement and postnatal care is provided by the employer. Under the SS code, the requirement remains the same, but the central government may modify the bonus amount by the notification. Under the SS code, employers may pool their resources and set up a common crutch facility or inter alia use a private crutch. This was not provided under the MB Act. So now under the SS code, the crutch will be compulsory so that the women can uh, take care of their new babies. And then other provisions are same. 
<coughs> employees compensation provision. The EC Act applies to specified employees and industries, including employers and employees to whom ESI chapter does not apply. This remains unchanged under the SS code also and other provisions are unchanged. Unorganized sector. The unorganized sector has obtained representation and coverage for the first time. So, like for example, gig workers, okay. workers outside the traditional employer-employee relationship will be covered under the SS code. Home based workers like work from home people, persons engaged in the production of goods or services from an employee in his house or other premises of his choice other than the workforce of the employer for remuneration irrespective of ir whether or not the employer provides the equipment, material or other input. So, people who are working from home, people who are working as an independent freelancer, they will also be under uh, this SS code, social security code. Platform work, platform workers like the for example, uh, you can say the Ola, Uber and Zomato. So, they are all platform workers. Workers who assess organization or individual through an online platform and provide services or solve specific problems engaged in additional categories of service may be notified by the government. Registration of workers. In order to claim coverage, registration of unorganized sector workers will be required with linkage to Aadhaar number. So, this new SS code is trying to bring all unorganized new types of employees under the social security protection. Social security for unorganized sector, central government funds, social security funds for life and disability cover, health and maternity benefits, old age protection, education any and any other benefits to be set up. So, state government can also create the same type of things like the PF, employment, injury relief, housing, educational scheme and all these things. Aggregator co contributors, so like the Ola, Uber, Zometo, Flipkart and all these are aggregators basically. So, they are also supposed to uh, add something like aggregator digital intermediaries or marketplace for a buyer or a user they can also, they will also require to contribute something. So, the state government, central government and these uh, platforms. Scheme for gig workers and platform workers may be funded through a combination of contribution from state government, state, central government and aggregators. Contribution from aggregators may be at rate notified by the government between 1 to 2 percent of the annual turnover of the aggregator. So, this is going to be very, very big change where the government is saying that you cannot exploit freelancers like that. You cannot say that these are not our employees because these people are working for you. Okay? You have to take care of them. So, your annual turnover may be up to 1 to 2 percent you have to contribute for their social security. Okay? Contribution towards welfare fund cannot exceed 5 percent of the amount paid or payable by any aggregator to the gig worker and platform workers. So, covers ride sharing like food and grocery services, content and media services and e-marketplace. So, this is like a new generation social security ecosystem where all types of formal and informal employees will be included in social security umbrella. <coughs> Pandem uh, pandemics recognized power during the ep uh, epidemic have been provided to the government. The government may defer or reduce employers or employees contribution under PF and ESI for period of up to three months. It happened during the corona period. It increases the penalties. Penalties have been substantially increased under the SS code like for example, MB Act, Mat Maternity Benefit Act. If the employer fails to provide any maternity benefit to which a woman is entitled, the employer is punishable with a fine up to 5000 or imprisonment up to 1 year. Under the SS code, the punishment for the same offense is imprisonment for a term which may extend to 6 months or with a fine which can go up to 50,000 or both. So, still it is a criminal offence. Compounding of penalties is now possible for the first time offence, the same thing. 
employers will be given an opportunity to correct non-compliance within a specified time period of any offence under the SS code prior to intimation of the prosecution or proceeding. So, if they believe that they have done something wrong, they can correct it within a reasonable period of time. The next and fourth code is Occupational Safety Health and Working Conditional Code. OSH code replaces and consolidates 13 acts, 1, 3 acts including key enactments such as outdated factories act, contract labor acts. Code applies to all establishments in which 10 or more workers are employed, thus covering all types of activities including service sector, production sector, any type of sector. Okay. <coughs> Factories and construction workers subject to specific provision. To be regulated, a factory should employ 20 workers using power or 40 workers without the power. State government may exempt a factory from the applicability of this law. Okay. Contract labor threshold also increased from 20 to 50 contract workers for both principal employers and contractors. So, the government is trying to bring a system where the small players will not come under the preview of the labor law compliances. As the objective is that the only big players, uh, um, the companies who can afford such type of compliances, they should only come under the umbrella of labor compliances. Common registration under the OSS code factories require additional licenses. All establishment now governed by the new SS code must register within 60 days. They cannot hire employees unless registered or if the registration is cancelled. <coughs> Any change in the ownership or management of an establishment should be reported immediately. Closure of the establishment must be reported within 30 days along with the certification that all dues to the employees have been paid. So, now they cannot close down a factory or an organization without giving their due salaries to their all employees. So, until and unless they do not have that certificate, they cannot close it down. Obligation imposed on person who supply articles to an establishment to ensure that there is no health hazard associated with such articles. Okay. Employers are required to compulsory issue in appointment letter if not previously issued to issue within three months of the commencement of the act provide free annual health check. Employers to report death and serious bodily injuries not able to work for when I say bodily injuries means like not able to work for 48 hours or more at the workplace immediately they need to notify to the government state government or central government. Employers and employees are required to disclose workplace dangers to the inspector whose decision on the matter is final. Women who consent are allowed to work in factories during night time 7 pm to 6 pm. Okay. So, OT is permissible with the prior consent of the workers and they are to be paid at the twice the normal wages. So, now women can also work during the night time. In some factories right now the Current factory law in India does not allow women to work after 7 pm, but now this law will uh, change the situation and women can work even night time also. But when they work in night time, so there has to be some provisions like the separate toilets, bathing facility, lockers for male, female and transgenders. Welfare officer must to be appointed if a factory employ more than 250 workers. Okay, threshold reduced from the earlier 500. So, now this is reverse. Okay, they want government wants that there has to be a welfare officer in every factory if they are having more than uh, 250 workers. Canteen to be provided if an establishment employ more than 100 workers okay. and crest to be provided if the establishment employ more than 50 workers. If contract workers are employed through an unlicensed contractor, such employment is illegal and may potentially make such workers deemed employees of the principal <coughs> employer. Contract workers to be issued experience certificate by the contractor if demanded by such workers. So, the, the contractor cannot refuse to give experience certificate to even the contract workers. 
Civil courts barred by hearing matters under the OSS code. Specifically, no injunction can be granted by civil court in relation to the matter under the OSS code. What happens now, right now, that the employers, the factory owners, they go to the civil court and they get some stay or some injunction. Now, it will not be possible. They have to go to the labor court, okay, the labor authorities. They cannot go to a normal civil court. Compounding of offenses introduced by paying 50 percent of the fine amount. Fines varying between 20 at uh, 2 lakhs to 3 lakh imposed on violation by the employer. Okay, so now th they can compound also. Failure to comply with duties relating to hazardous uh, processes or violation which result in death of an, an employee subject to 2 years imprisonment and fine of 5 lakh rupees. This is very clear. If they do not comply with the proper safety regulations and some employees dies because of that, then the concerned person will be criminally responsible and can go to jail for up to 2 years. Key conclusions, substantial law is more or less the same. So, it is not like that they have, it is not like that they have changed completely, but they have made some uh, changes considering the requirement of making a balance between employer and employee welfare. <clears throat> Government approval for retracement, layoff, threshold of factories, mines increase from 100 to 300 employees. Flexibility to employers to hire and fire without government approval. Requirement for the permission to retrace close down facilities with the 300 plus. Statutory payment for retracement still based on the tenure and moves towards better EEO workplace. Okay. Initial violation can be compounded, penalties have how been increased. So, if you do something wrong initially, you can make a compromise with the government, you pay some amount and it will be okay. However, the penalty amount have been increased. And interestingly, covering that, and that is a very important part covering in, uh, gig workers and other unorganized sector for the first time. So, this is more like a, a labor law for future because now as you can see millions of people, crores of people in this country are working in unorganized sector. They are gig workers, they are freelancers, they are working for aggregators like Ola, Uber, Zomato, Flipkart, so many companies they are working with them and that is the future. So, current uh, labor law is not covering that type of employees. So, now the new labor code will cover those employees also. Trade union representations were made very clear. Earlier, there was a lot of confusion, disputes, trade unions were going to uh, courts, but now it is very clear either 51 percent or more or there will be a council. Okay? Fixed term employment possible across all sectors. Okay, so fixed term there will be like a term one year, two year, whatever time they want to do that's possible. <coughs> Ban on strikes in private establishment without notice. Earlier it was only public sector, but now even in the private sector they have to give six sixty days notice. Then only they can go for strikes. Not very progressive in attracting investment in manufacturing sector because you will find that most of the time they have they haven't changed much laws. So I'm not sure how the manufacturing sector will attract more investment through these laws. Rationalization and simplification of definitions. Okay, that's good. Simplification of regulatory procedure. That's very important. Now people have to do less filing. They have to maintain less registers. That will help small players because most of the time small players as I said earlier, they are not able to hire compliance manager, welfare officer, labor welfare officer, legal manager. So, they, they do not comply with all these rules and regulations because of it is too much. So, now maybe few filings, few registrations they will be able to do it and applicability of statutory benefits to even contract workers. So, earlier it was only for the permanent workers. Now, all statutory benefits like the EA, uh, PF and gratuity and maternity leave and all types of statutory benefits will go even to the contract workers. Because right now the contract workers in India, the existing labor laws, they are not protected at all. Okay? So, this law will protect 
those contract labors also and streamline dispute resolution mechanism. Currently, the dispute resolution mechanism is very weak in India between the employer and employees. So, most of the matters are going to the courtroom and because of the lengthy litigation process and nothing is coming out very quickly. Okay? So, to maintain the balance between the welfare of employee and employer, the, the, the new courts will create a strong dispute resolution mechanism and e-filing given legal backing. Earlier, right now it is all offline, it is all offline, too much discretionary power with the labor inspector, but this e-filing after having the legal effect will change. The. So, I think this is all about the labor law and uh, what I am trying to say that when you go work in a company, maybe you are an HR manager, then obviously this is very much uh, directly relevant to you. Even you are not a HR manager, maybe you are a sales manager, marketing manager, finance manager, you need to understand the dynamics of the labor law. Okay? Because labor law is changing now in India, you know, it is giving protection to many uh, new types of employees. At the same time, uh, criminalization is removing, but now they are putting more and more penalties. And the second thing which as a young business manager you should know that uh, people are getting more and more awareness about their legal rights. Okay? So, when you are when you're working in a company, sometimes maybe your own rights are being violated by your company. So, you should know your legal rights, especially labor law rights. And uh, like for example, this maternity leave. Okay, so, maternity leave is the fundamental legal right of every woman in this country, the crutch. It is a fundamental legal right of that woman. So, if you believe that your organization or your company is not uh, fulfilling all the legal obligations, uh, you can take an action. If you do not want to take action anonymously, you can write in a letter to the concerned labor enforcement agencies, they will take action. So, I believe that even as a business manager, if you are much aware about the labor rules, regulations, procedures, it makes you a better manager, you know, because then you understand the requirement of labor, how to take care of your people, okay, that is very important. And at the same time, this law also provides protection to employer. So, now very less cases of the criminal liability. So, uh, is, and the role of the inspector has changed. So, that is again very good for the employer. Okay? So, now if you as a manager, suppose you are an administrative manager, labor welfare manager. So, you need to understand the job of uh, inspector has been changed now. Okay? The job of inspector is not, not just to come and say that you have done wrong, wrong, wrong. Even his job is to advise you, his job is to tell you what is right, what is not right, how to make it correct. Okay? So, if you understand the legal provisions, you can talk to uh, labor inspector, you can talk to your employees, you can talk to your employer in a very efficient manner. So, finally, I just want to say a uh, few things that India is changing labor laws after this four courts, I believe it will be very dynamic and as a young business manager or a business student, you should know the upcoming changes in labor law because sometimes even your own labor rights or legal rights can be violated by your company, your colleagues, your family and second, once you are more aware about the legal rights, you can help your colleagues you can create a culture of ethics, a morality, legal compliance in your organization. Thank you very much.